tradition. My grandparents told me this, and I obey them. I'm 53 now, and I've never picked it. But the young generation is different. They don't believe in sin, nor religion, so they're making money from it. And this is Yasagumba. Half of it is the yellowing, mummified caterpillar of the Himalayan bat moth, and the other half is a fungus that has grown out of it. For centuries, it's been prized as an aphrodisiac by the Chinese, and it grows here in the high passes of the Himalayas, above three and a half thousand meters. One kilo alone can fetch up to 10,000 US dollars. The medical properties are numerous and many. Carol Dunham is a medical anthropologist who's worked in Nepal for the past 25 years. She says it's unclear exactly how Yarsugumba works, but it's well known as a powerful medicine. Yartsugumbu is known um, as a immune booster. It's also known as a great aphrodisiac. It's known as an aphrodisiac in terms of very similar to Viagra. It's considered to be help from, for impotence in men, and it's considered to be a great stimulant for men, and uh, so it's considered to help men in that aspect. It's not an, to considered an aphrodisiac for women. This property has meant that Yasagumba has become the most valuable commodity in this remote region that has few sources of income. For some, it's brought great wealth, but for others, great misery. In June 2009, seven outsiders who came to these mountains to pick Yasagumba were murdered by a local mob, their bodies thrown into a deep mountain ravine. Nal Prasad Upade was the police officer in charge of the investigation. It was very big operations. Uh, more than, than 80 police personnel were mobilized and dead cats. Two bodies we collected in a very difficult place. It was very difficulties and police used uh, rope, uh, ropes to collect the um, uh, two death bodies. And other five bodies we can't recover. 36 men from the village of Na were arrested and are still waiting for a verdict. There isn't a prison big enough to hold them all, so they're being kept in a converted district education office. In the past few months, 17 men were let out on bail. The rest spend their time playing cards and depend on their relatives to bring them food. I think my brother will be freed very soon. Whenever I've met him, he said he hasn't done anything wrong. Sama Sering's brother is one of those in jail. Every day she brings him supplies. Because most of the men from her village are in this jail, there's no one left to work. Our land is barren now. There's no one to plow the field, so we haven't been able to grow anything for two years. Women who know how to do men's work are somehow managing, but most of them can't. A verdict in the case of the Yasugumba murders is expected in February. From March, the Yasugumba picking season will start again, and hundreds of locals will scour the mountainsides, searching for the valuable drug, in the hope they'll make their fortune. But for many who live here, Yasugumba is not a blessing, but a curse. And they remember the old Buddhist saying that it will bring nothing but bad luck. Joe Jolly reporting there. It's 19 minutes to 40.